this building we're in right now was actually built in the mid 1990s when people were starting to respond to youth crime with adult consequences and people were describing kids as juvenile super predators mm -hmm. and so they were building adult-like facilities like this part of the Bonaire campus because they thought that was the right way to respond to kids and yes. what they forgot was they were kids. How y'all doing today? So how'd you get into acting, bro? Like, how did that come up? Actually, I, I used to be a background dancer. After I got cut in my face on my, my 25th birthday, like directors and photographers was like, they found the scar um, striking, I guess. What would you saw yourself when you was like 15, 16? I was clueless. The drugs were already like starting to plague me. I didn't think I would live to see 30. That's the life. That's, that's the world we live in now, man. It's crazy sad, man. How long you been? Two years in jail. I gotta do, like, I gotta do a long time. My charges led two accounts of um, second degree murder um, and one account of malicious wounding. I was just young, man. I was real young. And then the courts don't need to say it like that. They don't get to know your whole background. They just care about the crime you did and not why you did it. But it's always a reason for everything. How did we come to this decision to treat mistakes that an adolescent made with adult repercussions? People were getting elected and running for office at the expense of kids in the system, and they were judging kids too much by what they were doing rather than who they were and the circumstance they were in and their age. When I became the director, mm -hmm. all we had left in Virginia were two facilities that were like this. Not only were they built in the wrong way and too big, but they're also miles away from where a lot of the kids come from. So you can't do the underlying work you need to do to make sure they go home to a better situation. Situation, family it, matters. Exactly. And the other thing about places like this is that they eat up a lot of money. But we run probation offices across the state, so the kids in the facilities were fewer than 10% of the kids we worked with, but they were eating up 40% of our budget. And they were, re-offending at very high rates when they got out. So we closed a facility that looks a lot like this earlier this year. So we're building treatment programs all over the state so that hopefully more and more kids can get what they need before they, get, they and get here. Before they get here. How much does it cost to house a kid in here? Per kid today is more than $200,000 a kid per year which is a huge amount of money. Yes, sir. And that's okay if you're spending it on the highest need, highest risk kids in the system to get them on the right track. But the thing is making sure that almost every kid is someplace else. And the only kids who are here are kids who there is no other place to safely work with them. I got here kind of on the heels of the recession and budget cuts and a lot of the programs we used to have for kids here have been cut. So young people were spending way too much time in their rooms. Good work doesn't happen when they're in their room. Good work happens when they're out engaging with staff, going to school, doing work. So we have made a big priority of expanding the programming here. We got to make sure they leave us better off when, when they, they got came. Here. That would be the goal. Can you tell me what, what life was like before you got incarcerated? The hood I was living in, out Fresno, Virginia, it was, it's, it's not too good of a neighborhood. So it was a lot of violence, a lot of gang stuff like that. You know how it'd be. Yes, you know, you from the street, you know how yes, it'd be. Yes, so I had to fight to make it. I mean, if I didn't, then I mean, he's either the predator or the prey. I did make a crime in that. I, I know I do gotta pay the price, yes, but the, the cost, you know, we never thought it'd be the rest of my life. When I first got incarcerated, I was real mad and stuff. I didn't talk to anybody, you know. Eventually I got over like the situation and made the best of it. So what are the things that you have gotten that's on a good note from being in here? The resume I got, I done yeah. built up such talents and tools. Like I've learned to strip floors, work the machines. Um, I've learned to cut hair with the 
the therapeutic portion of stuff we learn here too, slowing down and processing the situation and saying, man, I really didn't want to fight or anything like that. You just misunderstood where I was coming from and I apologize. Like, and I'm seeing, I'm like, I had never seen that a day in my life on the, on the streets. Do you really think that putting that much time on, a, on an adolescent is fair? You know, kids are very different than adults and, and, and we can't make life altering decisions based on things that they do when they're young. It's not that they shouldn't be held accountable. No, it's not that there aren't safety all. concerns we need to address, that's a, but saying this is what the rest of your life looks like for something you did with your 15 is at odds with science and it's kind of at odds with all the experience we're having with kids. You know, people often ask me about the kids who are here. They say, well, you're down to 200. Those must be the worst of the worst, but you met them today. Yes, I did. And they're still kids with dreams, and they're still kids with talents, and they're still kids with hope and potential. If kids end up in a place like this, number one, it should be after we've exhausted all other opportunities. And number two, that from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed, they're doing something that matters to them, that's gonna get their life in the right direction, and that we're doing all we can you know, to keep hope alive.